In this video we're going to introduce exponential functions and we're also going to complete an example on an exponential function. It says here that exponential functions have a variable such as x as a power and a base which is a constant. So the general rule for exponential functions is y equals a to the power of x. Now a is our base and we just said before that the base is a constant. And then we have our power which is x and we said that the power is a variable such as x which is what we have here. Now in case you have forgotten what a variable is, a variable is something that changes all the time such as the prime numeral x or y or other letters that are in the alphabet. So a good example of an exponential function might be y equals 2 to the power of x. Notice how we've replaced the a with a constant, the number 2. So there's lots of different exponentials we can come up with. y equals 3 to the power of x or it could be y equals 0 0.5 to the power of x. It could be a decimal as well. Now we're told here that a is a constant, but it's also greater than 0. So what does that mean? Well, it means that you can't have something such as negative 2, which is a negative number in brackets, to the power of x. If you did something like this, it wouldn't be an exponential function, and you can't even graph something like this either. So I'm going to put an extra just to say we can't have negative numbers in place of a. I would also like to remind you that we don't always have to use y and x. An exponential function might look similar to this. It might be capital D equals 3.4 to the power of t. This still follows the rule because our base is a constant and our power is a variable or letter from the alphabet. Anyway, let's get into our example now. Example 1, we're going to complete the following table of values and then draw the graph for y equals 2 to the power of x. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us an insight into what exponential functions look like when we graph them. So we'll start with the first column here where x is negative 3. And we'll substitute that into our equation, y equals 2 to the power of x. This gives us y equals 2 to the power of negative 3. So we'll bring up our calculator here, 2yx, meaning power, so 2 to the power of negative 3, gives us 0 0.125. So we'll write that down, 0 0.125. When we do our next one, this time x is negative 2. So this time I'm going to go y equals 2 to the power of x, or 2 to the power of negative 2. So 2 to the power of negative 2 gives us 0 0.25 this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and finish this off. I would like you to also pause and fill these in on your own and see if you get the same numbers that I get. All right, I've finished filling in my table of values here and we're now going to plot the points on our Cartesian plane. So looking at our first point here when x is negative 3, y is really small, it's only 0.125. So we'll put that over here, it's only slightly above where negative 3 is. Our next one, when x is negative 2, y is 0 0.25. Um, and then when x is negative 1, y is 0 0.5. And then it gets a bit easier to plot these points. So when x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 4. And when x is 3, y is 8, which is going to go past our Cartesian plane here. Now when I draw my curve, it should look something like this. 
you might notice when we work from left to right that at first it seems like it's following almost a straight line and then it starts curving up slowly and then all of a sudden it seems to go up really quickly and this is something we refer to as exponential growth and probably the perfect example of this at the moment is the coronavirus we talk about how at first it seems like not many people are getting infected and then all of a sudden it seems to increase a little bit and then all of a sudden lots of people get infected really quickly you might also notice when looking at this graph that it passes through the point zero one down here and for many basic exponential functions it will pass through this point just about every time to help you understand why this happens I want to remind you that when you put things to the power of zero they always equal one to the power of zero equals one three to the power of zero equals one even a thousand to the power of zero equals one so when x equals zero we got a result of one now this was for y equals two to the power of x but even if we changed it to y equals three to the power of x or a thousand to the power of x or even 0 0.5 to the power of x you would also get a result of one because any number to the power of zero will always equal one which is why many times when you see exponential graphs they pass through the number one here or the point zero comma one now this isn't always the case for exponential graphs and i will be showing you situations where this doesn't happen one last thing before we finish off i would like to mention something that is called an asymptote now when we look at this graph you'll notice that it gets really really close to the x-axis and some of you might be wondering does it go below the x-axis and the answer is no it never ever goes below it or even touches it it just gets really really close so I'm going to draw a line and it's kind of like an imaginary line which is known as the asymptote and I'll just show you the spelling now it's a little weird I think the spelling for asymptote probably because it's only got one s and basically an asymptote is like an imaginary line that the graph will never ever touch or never ever cross okay so this imaginary line follows along the x-axis for this particular graph sometimes this imaginary line might be below the x-axis or even above the x-axis and we'll be seeing situations like that later on anyway that concludes our video introducing exponential functions remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video